Welcome to Advanced TV Herstory, where hearty discussion of all things TV draws a nifty circle around the women who have made it all happen. In each installment, we endeavor to celebrate, educate, illustrate, or analyze, all in the hopes of reaching listeners with the message that TV and women are very much a part of our lives. And it's okie dokie, it's fine and dandy that we talk about it at length, in detail, with delight. So find this podcast along the great ones at Libsyn, Google Music, iTunes, and Auto Radio. Engage with us on Twitter. Our handle is at TV Herstory. I'm your host, Cynthia Bemis Abrams. I hope you enjoy this installment. Hello, TV historians. The theme of today's segment is persistence. And it was a pleasure to capture persistence in the voice and energy of Marlene Forte, an actress you'd recognize in a heartbeat. You'd recognize her as the often crying middle-aged Latina in your favorite procedurals and sci-fi shows that have taken place over the last 20 years. I saw Marlene in a Bones episode where she played the ambassador from Ecuador and thought, hmm. So Marlene is riding a wave of interest in current TV shows that feature lead Latina actresses. Now that is not Marlene, however, These women are emerging talents in their own right, generally in their 20s, and with each character profile in each show, there's a relationship to a mother, and that mother is played by Marlene Forte. So in the conversation you're about to hear, we talk about persistence, we talk about changing careers, about realizing your passion no matter what your age is. We talk about the importance of having a support network and mentoring or sharing wisdom with this next generation. Marlene Forte was born in Havana, Cuba, and raised and educated in the U.S. Recently, she had a recurring role on The Fosters and Fear the Walking Dead, and is now in on the ground floor of two new shows, Fox's APB, and a brand new sci-fi thriller called Altered Carbon. Her IMDb profile is a testament to her persistence which finally has her breaking through the role of the grieving victim or family member to roles that have more impact on the well-being and the support of a lead character. And isn't it cool that that lead character just happens to be a woman? So please, listen in on our conversation. But then let's just jump into talking about the TV series that you're on today, because I have seen you, I have seen you on Bones, and I was I was uh, oh. very impressed by that episode. So, oh, <laughs> um, so but but I understand you've got lots of irons in the fire right now. You've got a lot going on. So go ahead and talk about altered carbon and APB and fear the Walking Dead. What you've been up to lately, and then we'll kind of walk yeah. back, backwards a little. Go ahead. Sure. Um, well, I'll tell you. I <laughs> right now today I am recurring on two different shows, which is unheard of in my career in 21 years. Um, and the curious thing, which is what I tell people and what I was talking about the other day, you know, I am on four shows right now, you know, and they're small recurrence, but the, 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 the point is that I am the mother to the number one or number two on the cast list, and they happen to be a female Latina lead. That's kind of impressive for me. For someone who started 21 years ago where I was still married to my daughter's husband, uh, dad, who was Rodriguez. So I was Marlene Rodriguez, and that was way too Latin. That was like, we're going to change your name. Let's go with Roderick. I'm like, who the hell is Roderick? I was born Anna Marlene Forte Machado. Pick one. And Machado was too Latin. Even that, sure. 21 years ago. Mm-hmm. There was no Justina Machado yet. There were no... Gina Rodriguez's or America Ferrer's or, you know, Selena Gomez and these surnames were still something that had to be kind of kept underneath. And, you know, or, or we're doing this for women. Years. We had men. Especially we for had... women. We had men. That's right. I was just yeah. going to say that because they, we've had our men, our Latino men kind of woven into some of these procedurals already. You know, they're number five or six on the cast list, but they're there. But for female Latinas, you know, even my role as the mother, I call, you know, I am, I, I like to call myself the Florence Henderson of Latinas, is, you know, I, I've been playing moms to a lot of people in 21 years, and for the first 10 years, it was a lot of weepy moms. I was, you know, and it's funny that you say Bones, because Bones was one of my first 
roles where I was, yes, of course, I was, you know, very emotional over something, but I was a, a woman in a suit. <laughs> I was uh, with power. Woman, mm-hmm. With power, you know, with a certain amount of, you know, I wasn't cleaning the house of the woman in the suit. I was actually the woman in the suit. So, right. you know, those things have changed, and the roles have changed, and even the mother roles have changed, I think, at, at least for me, where now I am much more involved in the lives of my children on TV. I mean, even Dallas, where I was still Baba Ewing's housekeeper, I was very much involved in the, their day-to-day lives. My daughter was involved in their business, you know. So even all that stuff has been interwoven much more. And, um, I mean, you know, that's ideally what everybody, every ethnicity wants, right, just to be interwoven into the fabric of this country and all be called Americans. I just really yeah. have shows by friends with actually a bunch of people in color. I loved friends, but it wasn't my friends in New York. I was there in New York during that time, and I'm like, none of my friends ever look like that. <laughs> <laughs> love the show. Big, big love the show. But I was like, mm, not New York. <laughs> but, okay. Um so, you know, so these current I've shows, seen Altered Carbon and APB, who, the the role you play is the mom, and then who are these young women? Tell, well, tell me Natalie them. Martinez. Natalie Martinez is on APB, and, um, you know, um, I am Cuban. I was born in Cuba, and this is the first time I actually get to play Cuban on TV. Um, I usually play a lot of South American. You know, Mexicans and Salvadorians and Guatemalans and, you know, um, just not – even Puerto Ricans, just not Cuban. <laughs> um, so uh, Natalie Martinez, who is uh, uh, just a fantastic, uh, brilliant, young Cuban-American actress, and uh, I remember I said to her, is there a big Cuban community in Chicago when we got there when I first met her? And she said, I don't know. And I go, why is this character Cuban? And she's like, I, I, I'm Cuban. I do Cuban. <laughs> I was like, awesome. <laughs> I love it. Thank you. Um, and then Marta Higadera, who is uh, a young, fabulous actress. I don't know her. I got in, I, I've been introduced to her via YouTube. I haven't met her yet. I'm going to meet her next week when I get up there in my first rehearsal. Um, but she's just a brilliant young actress. Um, comes from, you know, seems the art world and, and her parents, you know, were, were artists themselves. So I'm looking forward to working with her. And, and interestingly enough, the role is kind of the same. I am the mother to the lead cop. Um, so it is kind of a procedural, just like ATB, but also very, um, much in the future. Altered Carbon is based on these, um, kind of cyberpunk novels that Netflix bought out and, and, um, funny because I think that um, sci-fi has been thrusted upon me, um, especially after Fear. I think Fear the Walking Dead just mm-hmm. um, put me in a different, you know, yeah. I, 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 I do love the roles that I'm getting now. I can get a little crazy behind the eyes, which is fabulous. Um, <laughs> and Celia did that for me. Um, but, you know, the, these are the roles. So these are the two. It's Altered Carbon and, and uh, ATB. But I just put a small, a small recurring on a, a superstore. I'm playing America Ferrer's mom, me and Tony Plana. And Tony and I also play the grandparents of Sierra Ramirez on The Foster, who's um, another young, amazing powerhouse actress. That girl is a triple threat dancing. So there's this crop of young, beautiful Latinas with Latin surnames mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. on the scene now. And I happen to be the right age right now to play their mamas. So it's working out really well for me. <laughs> well, and and we don't have, you know, we we sort of have an. We're once again seeing a few more mother daughter relationships, and we see them yeah. as much in comedy as we do, probably more so than in drama. We have very yeah. rarely seen a strong female character then who has her mother in, as part of the dramatic, you know, um, yeah. uh, entourage, and yeah. and that's such an important part for storytelling. And then if you if you layer onto that sort of a, a cultural approach to storytelling and the relationship yes. that Latinas have with their mothers and the yes. family and and yep. the the strength of a of a mother in that in that sort of cultural environment, you have an opportunity yeah. to shine. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Thank Excellent. you. But yeah, it's it's yeah. right timing. Time is everything too, and the timing. I mean, um, you know, I've I've put in my years, and the timing is 
is fantastic right now. It's a good, you know, it's a good time. It's a good time for television. Um, it's a good time for TV series, Amazon, Netflix, all the new venues and all the production that's going on. And some of it isn't great. Uh, some of it is fantastic. Um, it's opening the doors for new ideas, outside of the box ideas, outside of the box characters who would be leads. Uh, you know, network television for a very long time kind of set the standard for that. And, um, that's blown open. That's, that's, it's yeah. a brave new world now. So, and, yeah. you know, even 10, 10, 15 years ago, cable was making it happen and you had, yeah. you know, the closer and bones, bones and it's what, 11th season. And I mean, that, that's so yeah. fascinating. But now, like, you just have so much more available. So it now is a really great time for people to be experimenting and pushing the boundaries that then ultimately yep. three years later we see on the on the legacy broadcast channels. So that's right. That's right. That's it, right. It, it, I would that's say right. it is rapidly changing. Now I want to yeah. talk a little bit because you've uh, you've broached that um, it's been a, a long haul. You know, you your IMDb profile goes back 20 years of just bread and butter. You know, um, appearances, a couple appearances on any given series. So tell me a little yeah. bit about your entry into acting. What prompted you to do it, and um, and how how your career has evolved from in, in all these twenty years? Uh, well, what prompted me to do it? Uh, my age, <laughs> getting older. Um, I was a fourteen thirty, and I thought, geez, Marlene, if you don't do this now, you are never going to do this. Mm-hmm. And um, so I jumped. I, my daughter was about ten at the time, and. And I thought, you know, she's old enough to understand. And at this point, I had owned a video store for five years prior Blockbusters, uh, you know, when you still get a – because this was my idea right out of college. I thought, well, now I just have to find a way to make a living because I wasn't single at this point. And, uh, you know, my my husband, the reason being single is my husband of the time wanted more children, and I wanted to be an actor. And I was like, yes, no. Hmm. Now I'm a single mom. I did have his family and my family very, very much involved in raising my child, which I think made my life so much easier. Because I, you know, I see kids now and days with kids. So I call myself a kid with a kid, and I'm like, how do they do it without family, you know? Um, yeah. But anyway, at that point, I had had the parents for six years. Blockbuster had just come into the – and I owned a lot of VHSs. And, uh, and I was almost 30 and I thought I'm, and there was this audition across the way. I was still in Jersey. I was a bridge and tunnel kid right on the Hudson River. And I thought, I'm going to audition for this company. And if I get in, I'm selling the store. And I got in. So I sold the store. Wow. <laughs> and wow. my mother went nuts. And my parents cried and were like, you can. You're a college educated woman. You can teach. What are you going to do? I was like, I'm going to go wait tables and be an actor. And I'll be back on the weekends, take care of my daughter. Um, <laughs> So it was kind of like that. And then on the weekends, I started doing dinner theater in Jersey. I would take my daughter with me, sit her in the audience, get her fed, be like, take notes. I'd do the show. <laughs> um, and we kind of, I just jumped in. And I even foolish to know that it was crazy and I couldn't do it. I just didn't. I was like, it's my turn now. I went to college. I got free. I got Dad, great. Now I'm going to go do what I want to do. And, mm-hmm. um, and that's what happened. And I just walked backstage, and nobody in my family was an actor, not, you know, none of us. So I just started doing extra work and started doing stand-in work and got the video store and, and then was blessed. Timing, again, there was this company starting. It was called the Latinos Actors Base at the time, and it ended up being Labyrinth Theater Company in New York. And this is people like Sam Rockwell and C- uh, Philip Seymour Hoffman and John Ortiz. And, I mean, these are the people that taught me acting. Judy Reyes, these are my, this is my company. This is, we started together, you know, a long time ago. And um, at the time, we weren't even a production company. We were just doing workshops every Wednesday night. And I learned acting there. And I was mentored by these amazing people. And, um I don't know, man. Just one thing. I just kept, I just didn't know any better. I didn't know that it was crazy to try to be an actress at 28 years old with no experience, with nobody in the business. I just didn't know any better. And I had said, I've done everything that everybody wanted me to do. 
Now I can go to law school yet again for my dad, or I can become an actor. And I said, I'm going to become an actor. And then I just did it. Um, read a lot of trade papers and uh, did theater for about seven or eight years. And once my daughter went to college, I went came out here to, New York, to L.A. and then had to teach and do some things for the next first couple of years because I couldn't even get commercials. I was doing a lot of commercials. My The fact that I'm bilingual helped me a lot. My Spanish got me into the union with an Alka Seltzer Club commercial. Um, <laughs> you know, um, they don't do a lot of Spanish. That's right. Yeah, that's right. I did a lot of Spanish commercials. Didn't do ever any of the work. You know, I just did everything. I did industrials for Ninex that took me to Switzerland for two years. I I watched the OJ trial in Switzerland in a Ninex convention. Um, I mean, it was kind of crazy, but I I then took the next ten years to educate myself in that way in this business and. Um, you know, got out here, found a manager that believed in me, and uh, one person, and that, and then, and then one agent to another, several agencies, one amazing manager, um, and that was that. You know, after this, it just and now I'm just now my mother, after 20 years, actually can say to people, yeah, my my daughter's an actress. She doesn't watch anything <laughs> I do that that's not in Spanish. Still, by the way. <laughs> So if you were to, uh, if, if a 28-year-old woman with a child and uh, and, and a, a somewhat of an education behind her, you know, with yeah. a college degree or, or, or less than a college yeah. degree, no, I got a college degree. You, what <laughs> yeah. do you, what do you say to her um, about what are your two tips for trying to make it in in the business, particularly if um. you're not. You know, if you are, uh, whether Latina or uh, any other ethnicity other yeah. than... Well, well, I think it's a good time. Yeah, I think, look, I think this. And your joy. Acting find, is is what brings you joy, what gets you up in the morning. What, what, what Find what makes you happy and you will never work a day in your life. And to me, acting made me happy. Since I was 10, I knew that. I knew that. I just was... An immigrant, the the the, uh, the 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 oldest of an immigrant family, and and I I just it wasn't my father didn't bring me out of Cuba to be an actor, he brought me out of Cuba to be a doctor or a lawyer, you know this was not the plan. So I was doing a lot of things for other people's happiness. <laughs> now, if acting makes you happy and you cannot really see yourself doing anything else on this planet, being an actor. I say, buckle down. It's going to be a bumpy night and long. It is not a horse race. It is a, it, it, it's a lifetime choice. Mm -hmm. So you have to change wow. everything in your life. Mm -hmm. That brings you joy. I don't care how old you are. You can be 60. Sure. There are and, and there's, old people on TV that have to be <laughs> portrayed. Yeah, and there Find have been actors, actors and actresses who have come to to TV or to stage, you know, later in life. Much later, and, yes. Um, and because and as an actor, uh, nothing is a waste of time. Everything that you've lived and experienced, it, you bring to your acting. Mm -hmm. So nothing is a waste of time. It doesn't matter what job you're doing. Mm -hmm. Nothing is a waste of time as long as you're meeting people. You know, if you're stuck in a room, that's kind of hard for an actor because you have to experience life so then you can recreate life. Right? So as an actor, your life is what you have to bring to your part. So nothing, I don't care if you were an accountant, even that is what you bring to your role, you know. So if you so live a you, full, curious life, you can really expand your range. <laughs> yes. Um, so it, it feels as though the, the passion thing is important, and that's obviously what – what all all mothers tell their daughters that's what you tell yeah. you that's what everybody tells everybody who's younger but the it feels as though the networking that you described and the and the close connections you had that you groomed in New York have served yeah. you well um and so are you still in touch with some of that same core group that yeah. that was so so close to you 20 years ago yeah yeah i'm still very close to those, they're still my, those were my chosen family, right? You have the ones that, the, the cards that are dealt to you, and then you go out and you find your chosen family, and, um, I'm very close to David Zayas and his wife Liza and Judy, and, um, I was with Phil, um, and, 
you know, uh, Paul uh, Calderon and Gary Perez, and these are still my my core people. So, um, yeah, you just, again, create that, right? That's the people that I created. And then, you know, throughout my career, I have some great friends that have come out of this now, you know, um, so, and that I'm still very close friends with, and every, every day is a learning experience, right? Now, this Altered Carbon, I'm going to do this whole thing in Spanish. I've never actually acted a whole, out of 30-second <laughs> commercial in Spanish. Right, right. So, you know, so every part, everything is a learning experience, right? And, and that's my challenge in this, right? So to be a, a, a mom that... It, no, it's exciting to be in your 50s and still learning and sort of on the cutting yes. edge of where technology is taking whatever it is, you know, and that's... Yeah, and so whatever it is that we're doing learn. next. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> wherever tomorrow takes us. Um, I also noted, and, and people who would find your IMDb profile to be so prolific for the, the um, acting work you've done, you also have done some producing and some directing, and tell yeah. me a little bit about how you came upon those opportunities and whether or not that's something you want to continue to do. Well, I do want to continue to direct. And producing is something that every actor is going to have to learn to do, too. Um, I produce... What, why is that? Um, well, because... because Think about it. It's the only business that... Even if you're a musician or an athlete, you get up in the morning, right? You go to your your piano and you practice eight hours a day, or your guitar, or you go on on the field and you 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 train eight hours a day. What do actors do? You sit by the phone and wait. How is that helping you be a better actor? <laughs> not. You lose your skill. You're not even ready for that audition. So you have to produce things. You have to find plays you're interested in and get together with friends and read them parts that you want to play. But now nowadays with an iPhone 7, you can shoot things. Come <laughs> on. Back then, yeah. it was 15 mil. I'm asking million screens on 16 millimeter short ends. That means the ones that people threw away of the cans. And I had two full cans, you know, and I cast myself in this. And I cast my friends, Judy and, 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 and David Zayas are in. Judy Reyes and David Zayas are in there. And, and, you know, we shot this movie that. <laughs> Nobody would have ever cast me to play the lead in, and and we shot it, and that's really what jump started my career. You know, wow. uh, we raised sixteen thousand dollars at the time. That was a lot of money. <laughs> you know, it was a lot to... of money. There, there exactly. are definitely, yeah, um, yeah. So, so producing so is something that's part of it. You have to learn to produce to produce your own work, so you can be ready to produce. To produce a space where you can, and I don't know what that looks like for you. It could be you know, for anyone. It can look whatever your resources are. For me, it was Labyrinth Theater Company. That was my, you know, that's where I was producing my work and I was working. I could go and be an actor. So if I got an audition, I wouldn't be, I mean, you're always nervous. I, I think I get anxious now more than nervous, but um, you know how to do your work. So you do your work and that's all you can do. You have a go and have a good you know, interview, putting it in layman's terms, you know. Sure. But if you're not, if somebody doesn't teach you how to interview, you know, like you just have to be ready. And the only way to be ready is like like any musician or any anybody who does this type of work, you have to do it. And that means you have to create or produce a place for that. Mm -hmm. I Yeah, from a personal perspective, I would say I have never written more in my life than when I started to create these scripts for this podcast and now am to the point where I, I write far faster and far more succinct and more, exactly. longer than I did, you know, 20 years ago. Um, exactly. Closer to my college experience. So yes. um, can you tell us then, do you have any ideas or projects that are sort of in the offing that – uh, you might either produce or direct because they are they are kind of bubbling passions for you. Um, yeah, I do actually have a short that I am. It'll be my first directorial movie. I've only directed on stage and uh, a webisode, one webisode I've directed. Um, so that, that fluid in that part. But I've been on sets for 21 years now, and or or 
stage. And um, it's called Familia. It is. Uh, I have a friend of mine who transitioned from a man to a woman, and I am very much um, into transgender. You know, LTBG rights and all. I just human rights. I think human rights are human rights. Humans are humans. It's just like women are women and women rights are it's human rights. Right. Human rights for everybody. I, I believe in that. I don't care what religion. I just be nice to each other. Love each other. Be <laughs> loving human beings. And this short is, is Nelson now is Kay Spina and she wrote, she wrote this amazing short that she wants to be in and I think, um, I'm going to direct it. I know I'm not. I'm going to direct it. Be positive, Marlene. I'm scared. It's my first film. Um, and I think I'm going to do it right when I come back from Altered Carbons. It's uh, slated for mid-July. It's the first time I've actually talked to anybody about it. So there you go. You got the exclusive on that one. Cool. <laughs> cool. Well, you should, you know, there's um, more and more kind of uh, groups on, on Facebook and Twitter where it's women in film and women directors and everything. So I'm sure that there's a... Once you actually announce it, you're going to find a, a huge uh, cheering section for you. So. Well, thank you for for helping me with that one because I've been a little scared. <laughs> I will say it out loud. No. And, 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 you know, and it takes people who have enough confidence in their own voice, and I think we all get that when we turn 50. We as women just yes. say, <laughs> Um, I need, you know, I, I'm done telling my story and I want to start telling others. And it's true that we really, the more people can understand about the differences that we all have, but the yeah. more importantly, what we all have in common, the more we can get more serious about solving the real world's problems, which, yeah. you know, what, what we're doing to, to the earth and what we're doing to each other just yeah. is. Um, to each other, that's right. It's, that's right. It's taking such a t- sad toll in that, li- in that world that we leave for our sons and daughters then. Um, That's it. Is not is not what we ever. It's in. bleak. It's not what we want. <laughs> right. Not right. And want. and I um yeah it's a it's a it's a tough day. So good for you for really uh, embracing your capacity as a storyteller and stepping out in and in stepping into something that is um, that will make a difference. And I hope you. I wish you great success on it as a short. I hope it lands into all the right film festivals and. Um, and that it's seen by many people and, and, and changes lives because that's, that's your lips to God's ears. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, so uh, anything else, I guess, that, uh, you know, we talked a little bit about representation. And I, I guess when I think about when I get frustrated about representation and looking at your your IMDb profile, you know, the, all of these roles you've had. Um, and and reading the item that you had written for Women in Hollywood, uh, the the blog mm-hmm. where you talked about all of those roles and the the years where you were just a crying mother, uh, usually by virtue of the fact that the role you had was tied to your ethnicity, and the ethnicity was tied to a, a conflict of some sort where you were, you know, you know, it was a it was a family in crisis or it was a it was a family that had just been victimized. Yeah. And I just wonder at what point in time we start saying a role is a role. Um, Marlene, Marlene speaks, you know, excellent, flawless English. You and, and moreover, <laughs> if you are in a hospital and you are meeting a cardiologist, the fact that that cardiologist more likely than not was not born in the United States is that, that <laughs> is increasing every single day. So, every day. <laughs> So I want to see you. I want to see you wearing the lab coat more. I want to see you, you know, carrying the briefcase and being the lawyer and and really being that role model so that all of those young women who are watching, all of the girls who are watching, see yeah. see you as as that voice and that person of power, um, so that they can aspire to something beyond what otherwise they would be receiving. Yeah, I appreciate that, and I think it's kind of important, and it goes back to even the fact that, you know, we don't have to change our names anymore, that we actually see surnames like Lopez, and, you know, I mean, these are women who have made a difference and are making money, you know, and I think also we're in a position, and we've been fighting this forever with the Nielsen rating and all that stuff, Nelson or whatever they call those rating Mm -hmm. things, it's like... There is a huge, huge pop, uh, um, a population that spends money, that has money to spend, and that's yeah. not what America is all about at the end of the day. So pay attention. We're here, and we have money in our pockets, 
educated people. You know, we've gone to college here already now. My sisters were all born here. I like to say I was imported, so I'm a little more expensive. <laughs> but <laughs> it's all a matter of perspective. I could say I'm an immigrant, or <laughs> yes, hey, Dad, yes, I'm imported. <laughs> right, right before they closed the border, too. So all exactly. The um, uh, I had I had one more question for you because as I think about. Um, what few, you know, I, I mean, and I am, I, when I do kind of deep dives back into the 60s and the 70s, and, and you take Diane Carroll, who, you know, has the Julia, um, uh, that, that credential that has her as oh, the first yeah. African American name yes. person, and, yeah. and I do yeah. hope to, to interview her at some point. But I also think, wow, you know, who is like the first, Latina or, you know, and I think of Anna Alicia, who was in soap operas. I think she was on Ryan's Hope for a while, and then she was on Young and the Restless for a long time. Probably, yeah, probably. Um, first so, Latina. Do you, who, so as you were kind of mulling over and, and, and living your life and renting out your, your, um, your VHSs at your store, who were the women <laughs> of color did, were there any who made an impression on you? Were there any that you looked at and you said, wow, you know what, if they can do this, I can do this? Uh, Elizabeth Benya. May she rest in peace. Uh, um, okay. Elizabeth Benya was the first one. She was closer to me in age. And um, she was doing things like Jacob's Ladder. And she was doing things like Down and Out in Beverly Hills. And she was a big part of it. And, um, uh, you know, I just thought... And she's Cuban. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so I really, I really saw her. It was the first person on TV. Now, you know, Rita Moreno, of course, with that story is still my favorite movie and play ever. Um, mm -hmm. But, but these are women that were older than me, you know. Elizabeth Spania was a couple years only. Like, I, I was like, oh, I could play that role. Mm -hmm. You know, I, today I could be that role. So, for me, it was Elizabeth Benya, and, um, you know, I actually got to do a movie with her once. I didn't get to act in in it with her, but we were actually in two movies, in you know, six, six Degrees of separ of, of Elizabeth Benya that we did together, um, and I did get to meet her, and she was a lovely person. Sorry that she's gone. Oh, um, but uh, I would say I would say her. <laughs> all right. Well, um, and, and, you know, that's important because – she represent you know if she if she caught your eye and and you yeah. uh were inspired and you aspired yeah uh by yeah. virtue of her her performances and her talent then imagine there's yeah. probably a hundred other women who eyeballed that and were maybe thinking that same thing so yeah i don't know it's, i i i do it, i do it's agree powerful i do agree yeah. yeah and and I'll tell you that is the one good thing about <laughs> becoming the old broad on set is um <laughs> I, I meet a lot of young actresses, like, or even the women that I am working with uh, that are playing my daughter, but even younger ones that, that, like, know my work, and they're like, oh, you know, and, and that kind of inspires me, like, I'm like, oh, maybe I'm actually making a difference. <laughs> you know? I, I, um, I think you are, and, and yeah. you ha so you, br you're bringing a network forward. They think they're developing yeah. their own networks. But there will be a little, a little crossover, a little share that you have yeah. an opportunity to expose these young women to, if not necessarily with regard to opportunity, perhaps the wisdom or the yeah. or the uh, the preparation for yeah. them to succeed. Yeah. Yeah. And and yeah. that's I think where yeah. we all find ourselves at this age with whatever our yes. our um, livelihood is, whatever we can pass forward, right? <laughs> right, right. Yeah. To, to just prepare them for success and 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 um and to and to manage themselves and to carry themselves to a higher level, um, because yeah. if we can't teach them what we learned, then then we're not doing our jobs yeah. as their mothers and their yeah. Then what's the point? Parents. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I'm like, then what's the point of me even being here? You know, and I think that that's that's. That's why we want to leave a better world, <laughs> you know, so we can leave stronger, wiser um, people and that will be yeah. kinder and, and loving to each other. And, and one human. last question, <laughs> is your daughter an actress then as well? Did I read that somewhere? Or is she? Uh, she started as an actress 
and she is now a producer. She works uh, at WME, William Morris Entertainment. She quit, and uh, uh, she quit. She got very disappointed while I was shooting Dallas. She booked. A, a, she was up till here in LA doing it till then, and doing fine. She, you know, had Abrams artists. I got her up there commercially, and you know, I mean, it's a little easier for her. So she had an agent going around. She booked this huge press campaign. Um, the ones that are going out with the pretty girls and they talk and it was going to be English and Spanish and they were going to use it for print. Cut to uh, the day of the fitting. By the time she got home, they replaced her. We told her it was her hair. Who knows what it was? This is the business we're in. It could have been somebody didn't like her. Somebody was her hair was too frizzy, too long. Who knows? It doesn't matter. The point is you have no control over it as an actor. And she called me up with her call time already in tears saying they replaced me after they gave me my call time. I said, well, you'll get paid. You know, you get paid for the day. You make a little money. And, she, you know, and she said, I, I can't do this, Mom. I can't do this anymore. I just don't love it the way you do for this type of pain. She went back to school, got her master's in professional writing, and did a couple of years at wow. Condé Nast and won an Emmy for online content. And William Morris scooped her up, and she's been now there for a couple of years, and she's happy as a clam. And she always says, producers have much more control, Mom. <laughs> Well, and that's and that's inspiring too, you know. And so she's, yes, you know, absolutely. she's taking these lessons. So uh, one, uh, so we talked a little bit about the fact, and this is the last question. You were born in Havana, Cuba. You came over. Your your sisters were born here. Where did you? Mm-hmm. Where did your family move from Cuba to the United States? Where in the United States? To Jersey. We uh, well, we landed in New York first because my I had an uncle and an aunt that lived in. The- in New York. So we landed on McDougal Street, which my father swears is the reason that I'm an actor. Um, <laughs> and the minute we started school, um, he did, my mom hated New York from day one. And there was a Cuban community right across the river on the Hudson side. My dad could still commute to work and work in New York. And uh, I grew up in a Cuban enclave, uh, Union City, New Jersey, which were all the other Cubans that didn't end up in Miami ended up. And... Um, and uh, and that was the beginning of everything. And it's very bridge and tunnel to the city. So it did leave me access to New York and, and you know, just that access to all that, everything that came with that, yeah. So um, And so your dad wanted so he, you to be a doctor or a lawyer, but what ultimately? A lawyer. But yeah, lawyer. Doctor, he knew I wasn't so great. And I was very good in all the, uh, the histories and all that stuff, but. Me and blood, not so good. But I was going to go to law school. I took the LSATs twice and had great grades and great recommendations, and I just couldn't do it. I said, Ma, you know, if I go to law school, if I get into law school, I'm going to go to law school, and I'm going to be a lawyer. I think I'd rather play one on TV. <laughs> so uh, I didn't do it, and uh, the rest is history. And then uh, my baby sister uh, went to NYU and became uh, kind of in the business. She is a host, was a host, worked for had a TV show in Spanish for a few years, worked for TV Guide, and now she works for the Home Shopping Network, and she's one of those people that sells everything. Um, she's got, she's a single mom with three boys, so God bless HSN. And um, yeah. and uh, my middle sister is a cost controller and runs like a construction company, Skanska, like she's the North American woman who runs it, so she nothing to do with this business. I call it the smart one. <laughs> but she gets to dress up in the suit and carry the briefcase and get taken seriously. That's right. Real, I get so. to play her a lot. <laughs> <laughs> well, I channel my family a lot. <laughs> it has been a pleasure chatting with you, um, Marlene. I'm, I'm grateful that you... Had some downtime here on this Saturday to connect and answer some some questions that I think help us better understand what it's like to be uh, a little outside the norm, but actually making it on TV and finding the role that's right. And I wish you all the best that the chemistry that you have with these uh, actresses uh, blossoms in such a way that those writers say, "This is the story right here, and let's uh, let's let's make this one memorable." Because memorable uh. moms and daughters, you know, they they change lives. And they change relationships That's right. and they keep families strong. So, Oh, thank you for that. Thank you. Your lips to God's ears. Oh, my gosh. Wasn't that absolutely uplifting? Watch for Marlene in APB and Altered Carbon, her two new shows, and keep an eye on her career as well. 
I get the sense from all that she's accomplished in her life that Marlene's future work, representationally and storytelling, will reveal her to be a model doer. I just get the sense that she's much more of an action-oriented person than just a talker. And so she'll be creating opportunities and storytelling with an eye to inclusivity. And isn't that a worthy shift in behavior that all of us should actually aspire to? And if it doesn't come naturally to any of us now, and I know I'm trying to work on it, keep it up because after a while it will become second nature and after a while we will have all been part of a change. I have to give many thanks to the listeners of Advanced TV History who stay in touch and keep sending the feedback in a strong and constructive manner. Thank you. I became connected to Marlene via her publicist with whom I worked on the Dinah Shore installment. And let me tell you, a lot of people were very, very interested in hearing more about Dinah Shore as feminist. While you've always been able to subscribe to this podcast and leave comments and ratings, at the hosting site Libsyn and at iTunes, you can now also rely on Core Temp Arts, that's a new relationship I've embarked on, as your go-to place for advanced TV history, as well as a host of other shows that talk about TV and entertainment. So yes, Core Temp Arts, literally www.core, C-O-R-E, temp, T-E-M-P, arts, A-R-T-S, dot com. So you'll find other shows there in addition to Advanced TV History. But now you can view scripts and listen to past episodes all in one place, and that's at the newly minted website, www.tvherstory.com. Every place you find the podcast, you'll also find a form to leave comments. But if you're a little too shy for that, there's always email. Find us at Advanced TV History, all one word, at gmail.com or on Twitter. Our handle there is at TV History. With the skill of a fine tailor, David Brown assembled the audio components of this show and masterful, if I do say so myself. And finally, thank you, loyal listener, for staying connected to this powerful and I hope inspiring podcast. I'm your host, Cynthia Bemis Abrams. <laughs>